Oh, there's one. There is a one which I just rolled. Ah, it's oh, Ian, come That's on. That's so funny. I rolled the one. I feel like I have, you know, kind of the answers. And that feels very arrogant to say that I have the answers. But the fact is that I'm trying to bring this idea to people and nobody's been able to say, no, that doesn't, that doesn't sound like you're wrong. Or, you know, I had Peter Bogosian on and he was able to be like, okay, uh, well, that one part is not such a great part. And I was able to tweak that. But, you know, I, I, I feel like I have them. Before we move on to that, big shout out to Melted Mind Media with a $2 super chat. Said critical. He rolled a 20. Yeah. Speaking of, course- of uh, I've got my, uh, oh, can you nice. see that? Is that there are, it's all 20s. Can you see it's a little blurry? Someone it's sent me bit. this die. It's all 20s, baby. All uh, 20s, yeah. media mind. Sorry to interrupt. Go for it. Oh, there's one. There is a one which I just rolled. Uh, it's oh, Ian, come That's on. That's so funny. I rolled the one. That's because so, I interrupted so- you. <laughs> all good. All good. So, yeah, I mean, my, my basic thesis is that there is two major things that are harming the the political discourse in uh, uh, this country overall, but specifically in this country. One being semantic obfuscation, the people uh, uh, people taking words that uh, uh, have a meaning and then changing them and m- messing with the meaning so that they can kind of use it. Best example is the word Nazi. Like a Nazi used to be somebody part of the Nazi party. And now Nazi is just somebody that disagrees with you. Um, and you know, they do the same thing with racism and dog whistle and all, all these, all these terms. Uh, and, uh, uh, then you have now a new generation of, uh, people who are not purposely obfuscating the language. They're using this twisted language. And, uh, so that's a, that's a major problem. And then the other one being dogmatic thinking that whether you believe that, and again, a little bit facetious with it, but whether you believe that there's a man in the sky or you believe that a man can transform into a female, then then we, we are at an impasse because you are uh, holding on to beliefs that uh, cannot be uh, falsified. And if that's the case and you're holding on, if you're, if you're going to die on the hill that there is a man in the sky, if you're going to die on the hill that a man can transform into a female, then we'll never be able to, to find that middle ground. And so if we can get rid of the dogmatic thinking, and we can uh, uh, make the language more concise, then whatever the issue is, we can just talk about it. What do you think? Uh, for sure. It's part of why I'm, I love the scientific method for what it does, because whenever I start to think like, I know that I've got to poke a hole in it. Cause there's, I, I and sometimes it can be a little debasing. Like you do have to believe, or it's, it's, it's helpful to believe in something. And to say, like, nothing's going to shake this right now. But also, like, doesn't mean it's always going to be true. You've got to, I think, leave some room for error because you're a fallible human. No one's got it 100%. It's impossible. I mean, as far as I can tell, it's things always change. We always learn more about what we think we are. Definitions change. Words, uh, the meanings that they used to have no longer ha- make sense because of the new perspectives we have. So that's like always like challenge your own beliefs. I think that's a big part of avoiding falling into dogmaticism. The changing of, of language is, is that's a powerful ability and it's true. That's I think a big part of why controlling the media is so important in that, like you find someone that's just and righteous and then give them the ability to kind of maintain a balanced media platform so that, so that people can debate ideas and meanings while referencing the past versions of those ideas and meanings. Hmm. Um, I don't know if you'll ever be able to stop people from changing the meanings of certain words uh, just because that seems to be the nature of reality. But, uh, but also like it, it, it shouldn't, if it happens too fast, I think that's a big problem. Yes. But, like it should Absolutely. be a, a long, slow understanding of, of amalgamation or, or, or morphism. If you're going to, if you're going to allow yeah, words. Absolutely. To... Yeah. I mean, language is definitely going to evolve uh, uh, organically over time. It, the, the the issue is when, uh, uh, you know, they're forcing the change and say, oh, no, you have to say birthing persons now instead of uh, uh, a woman. And, and, and that's where, uh, uh, you know, that's where uh, uh, that that really, um, you know, throws a, a wrench in the whole thing. Uh, shout out to Nick here has a great question for you. Uh, do you think morality can exist without believing in a God? So he's an uh, 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 an atheist, though I'm agnostic. Do you believe morality can exist without believing in a God? For sure. I didn't believe in a God for 28, 
29 years, 30, 36, 37 years. I started to sense it in my late 20s. And then I, I started to consider that it was a god or god in my late 30s. Uh, really, really only like three or four years ago did it start mm -hmm. to, to start. To, but like, I was always very moral because my parents taught me that, like, be nice to people. If if they're mean to you, that's OK. They'll learn later in life what they did was wrong and be be kind to them in response. These kind of things don't take it. You know, it's not it's not because of you that they were mean. They, they maybe they were they have a bad childhood or something like that. And fortunately, I was able to be taught the morals. But then the argument I usually get from people, specifically Tim, when we're talking about the show, is that my parents and the morals that they taught me are based in Judeo-Christian morals. It's based on the understanding of uh, a paramount and ultimate God of there's no other God before me. Don't worship false idols. Don't yeah. fuck your neighbor's wife. Don't be like the Ten Commandments and things like that that you could argue comes from God. Mm -hmm. But I can't get, I can't verify exactly. that. It just they're they're good. It seems to be good ways to live so that you don't harm your neighbors and you can live in a prosperous society. Um, right. And ultimately. And, and, uh... I would say, yeah, the answer is yes, that you can be moral without believing in a God, but that doesn't mean that the morality isn't derived from people that had believed in God. I completely agree. And that I think that's a big point. I I, I would, if, if at least so far, if nothing else, if nothing else, then I would say that's one of the most important things um, that, you know, as you go and, you know, talking to all these huge names and, and uh, all these people are, are uh, listening to you to, to understand that the there is morality without God, even if it comes from God somebody like myself is not looking to make that argument that it's not from God. I simply just don't believe in that God. Um, so, uh, uh, great answer. We got a it's question. Sort of, from, sorry. Yeah, it's sort of like if a car is driving down the road towards my house right now, I don't necessarily believe that that's happening because I have no proof or observation of it, but that doesn't mean that it's not happening. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. We got Guan Tech with the five dollar super chat. Said I like the idea of universal truth and drawing off the stories all cultures have told. Uh, uh, this is the closest we can come to God. Yeah. Shout out to Jordan B. Peterson. And um, yeah, I, I think that's that's pretty much I exactly uh, uh, what we are talking about here. I got them both. Don't worry, guys. Every single super chat comes with a treat for my uh, dog Morty over here. We'll get to that. Uh, number one, American Rob, welcome to the party. $10 super chat. Thank you. Thank you so much. Said Ian, I would love to talk to you about the towers being the uh, beginning theory. How can we make this happen? Great job. Much. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, let's have the conversation. I don't know. Let's 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 figure it out. Maybe on a Twitter space or something we can talk about this. But what about the towers being the beginning theory? I've never I don't know what towers you're referencing. He said uh, change the date. The date to the word towers. So the, oh. uh, about the date being the beginning theory. The date being the beginning. Mm, the date being the beginning. I don't know what that means, but I do believe in reality that the universe has never begun and will never end, that it's constant. It always is. This is like before I ever believed in God, I allowed myself to believe in infinity and let it just happen. Mm. It's kind of like in the gut. It's like an uncomfortable twisting of your gut to conceptualize that it's always been. And then now I think of the universe as a Taurus kind of flowing around, well, our universe, which is inside of another Taurus, inside of another Taurus. So it's never really. Yeah. Yeah. And then it gets us back to, to, to fractals. And, you know, again, that's a, that's a, such a big part of the misunderstanding of a, 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 and that's a lot why I've kind of steered away from the word atheist or atheism, unless I'm specifically trying to, uh, um, you know, specifically trying to, to have an effect because I don't, I know that there's so much baggage that comes with that. And, um, I, I just want to express the, the difference between all that spirituality, all that good fulfillment that you get when you you Christians are are, you know, uh, um, you know, being in uh, uh, when, when you're in church, when you're singing, when you're praying, when whatever it is, those feelings, those feelings are are real. Nobody's saying that they're not. Well, I mean, I'm certainly not saying that they're not. What I'm saying is that they don't have to come from a God. And if we can understand uh, uh, what they are then uh, uh then we can we can you know dive into them further oh okay 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 sorry so uh he was trying to say 9 11. okay so oh, Ian, okay. i would love to talk to you about the uh, uh, uh about the about 9 11 being the beginning oh of the i see what he's saying so i mentioned that there i thought go. world war three if there if we could pin it to a point in history in the future looking back that i would pin it to 9 11 because that's when the united states gotcha. like, went into full war mode gotcha. that's when they like kind of cracked down i don't know if you would call it um 
like a, a military, uh, like a martial law. It's not really martial law, but it's the most martial law I've ever seen in the United States. But I wasn't around during the Civil War. I think they, it was way more martial law back <laughs> not then. Not that old, eh? Yeah, not, not that old. <laughs> I'm only uh, 44. Shout out to Insight of the Ages with the $20 <laughs> super chat. It said, Gon is a scientist testing for all the best, uh, uh, testing for the best of all possible realities. A simulated multiverse where everything that can happen does happen and is happening. We perceive the curation of every best outcome. We can shape that. Yeah, that gets into stuff uh, uh, about, you know, like manifestation and stuff. What do, you, what do you think about that? Well, it makes me think of quantum computing, being able to simulate multiple concepts at once, like it's both a one and a zero at the same time, allows you to perceive lots of, I mean, if not infinite potentials, you don't have to calculate every universe one at a time. It kind of removes time from the, uh, from the equation of perception. With these quantum so maybe this this building of the quantum computer is getting us a a, a, a leap towards understanding god's mind mm, mm, interesting interesting and, and and again that's the that's the stuff that it's like if we can if we can dive into that there's so much there there's so much there but i i feel such a strong uh resistance from uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, uh religious people that you know you get into that and and it sounds like you know their religion is is okay but whenever you get anything to that that sounds uh superstitious or kooky or woo woo that's outside of the religion whoa 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 that's crazy that's crazy that can't possibly be and it's like why why is there such a carve out for your religion when the the creativity uh, of of what you know is possible when when we think about these in the context of science what we do already know then then why why do you want to stifle that I, I, don't I think get it. it's it's easy it's it's challenging for people. I don't want to manifest that it is because it can be easy too. But a lot I've found that like unlearning something that has been part of the basis of your understanding for twenty years or thirty years can be jarring and can like tear at your mind oh, yeah. and your soul and like your friends and family that all rely on this concept with you together. Then are going to question you you and if you're really who they thought you were and maybe they don't even want you over this day because then they have to question themselves. And, and so unlearning this idea of like the book that you were studied since you were six is a bit challenging. But when I talk to people that think of themselves as a religion and they pick their religion and they're like, this is mine, I just, I talk about God and it refocuses everyone on it. Like it, it's more than the book. It never was it supposed to be about a book, it was supposed to be about God and whatever it is, let's figure it out together. And I'm open to your interpretation through your books and novels and, and, and deciphers, but just stay focused on 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 the one concept and you can view it from many angles it can be the Tao, is like a, a a duality of looking at god it can be the trinity of hinduism where it's the protector the destroyer and the creator all combined in this one essence but you can look at it from different pieces of one right. or you can look at it as one through the monotheistic faiths or many many through these gigantic polytheistic concepts aspects of the one Right. And, and, and as you were saying before, that it may not necessarily be that any one of those is the right answer, that there could be a combination or multiple. And uh, uh, the, the adherence to one particular dogma prevents us from doing that. And that's why, uh, you know, when I talk about what we should follow, uh, as, you know, as Tim put it, the mission for this, this uh, new secular conservative uh, uh, movement that doesn't it, it doesn't conflict with religion it doesn't conflict with belief in god or taoism or hinduism or uh, islam or anything else it it, it just it has the base uh, uh uh values again community family merit uh, uh uh gratitude uh capitalism these kinds of things that we all agree upon as americans and whatever else you believe or if you come to those uh uh, uh, uh those values by this god or by that book or whatever then that's great and and I've been trying to to you know push this and say guys I think I think if we do this then we can keep a lot more people from from uh, uh, going down the the I was Christian and now I'm a leftist pipeline. I, I think that you know that rage that you're talking about when you find out I I certainly went through it you know I was in my my twenties when I started figuring out like oh I don't think I believe in this thing that was the 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 hierarchy structure for my entire life I don't think I believe in it. And that causes a lot of frustration, which is, you know, why you see the militant atheists. Most atheists are not really talking about their atheism and religion that much. It's the ones that are just figuring it out. And so that's why we have the representative heuristic that they're all angry. But it, that's not the case. That's just yep. not the case. And, and I think if we can open, uh, open it uh, up more 
to to hey we're all americans regardless regardless definitely shout out to the tim cast discord if we can regardless of how you came to these values if you believe in these things then we are we are going to uh, uh, be the the party, the group, the whatever that has the, the the power to move our society. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed that clip, check out the full live stream link in the bio and catch me live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. See you there.